Well, I started off my career um, in operational line management and um, I kind of watched closely what the HR function was doing in that organisation and thought that there was the possibility of really making a difference to the profit profitability of the business. Um, and so I just got instantly interested in that line of work. What really prompted me though was um, going through a process myself that I think really could have been handled better. So I kind of threw down the call and said, well, I'm going to go into HR and I'm going to see if I can be an effective HR practitioner. So I started my studies um, on the CIPD um, at the junior level and then went through uh, to become fully qualified and secured my first role. I think they're massive. I think that um, most organisations really provide a differential through their people. So if an organisation is really going to be successful, it's going to be able to um, deliver its service or manufacture its goods through exceptional people. And I think that's where HR can really make an impact. Um, if you think about um, how the profitability of a business works, if you say, well, you know, you could do a number of different things, you could increase volume, you could decrease costs, you could increase the price of a product. So I think that you can only increase the price, which is the most powerful thing you can do, if you've got an exceptional service or exceptional product. And I think that comes through the people that organise, uh, uh, work for the organisation. Well, Norlander's business is all about delivering service, so our product is effectively our people. So the HR uh, department there, um, as we are, uh, we work on the Auric model, uh, which um, obviously has HR business partners and then sense of excellence. Um, we're very much embedded into the business. Our HR business partners work very closely with the line and operational managers uh, within the business. And I myself work in the uh, employee relations centre of excellence. So we're very much uh, embedded in the business. We're developing our policies and our procedures that meet the objectives of the business. Uh, we're a fast growth business which obviously comes with its own challenges um, but that's, that's exciting in a way as well. Um, as an HR department we very much focus on how we bring talent into the business and how we manage that talent and that's very much my role. I've been in HR now for about 20 years uh, when I first joined the HR function. It was very much a bureaucratic function, it was very much dealing uh, in a firefighting kind of way with issues as they came up. I think HR functions now as they are are a lot more proactive and they can get involved in the early stages around strategy, around product development and around differentiating through people. And I think that that's kind of reflective across a number of organisations now where the HR function um, just doesn't look anything like the personnel function as it used to. Well, I, uh, in my earlier career I was in an ER job, employee relations job, uh, which I very much enjoyed. Back then, that was, as I say, about 15 years ago, that was very much union uh, interaction and dealing with um, employee consultative groups. Um, and then I went into a generalist role, um, and then over the last year or so I've gone back into specialising in ER. Um, I think that you just have uh, an inclination towards that particular role. If you think about the different um, roles within HR, whether it's resourcing, comps and bands, or employee relations, you just naturally have a bit towards one or other of those. Um, and my interest is particularly in employee relations. I think it can have a major impact on, on the success of an organisation, and that's where I enjoy working. Sure, well, employee relations means different things to different organisations, I think. Um, it very much depends on the organisation that you're working for. So, if you're working in an organisation that's got a transient workforce, for example, all your, the ER issues there are really around making sure that you get maximum performance out of the people whilst they're with you. If you're working for an organisation that's more, uh, has a, a a CSR agenda for example, then you're managing the expectations of the workforce in, in meeting those expectations around corporate social responsibility. The organisation that I'm working for at the moment is a fast growth one and so actually what we're doing in my particular role is more focused around talent management and succession planning.
Well, the employment relationship will mean different things to different organisations, um, and it's also very fluid, I think. It changes over time. So if you think about the um, PESTEL model, for example, which includes things like political aspects, social aspects, economic aspects, um, that will very much define what the employment relationship is at that time. So if you think about where we are at the moment with the economic issues that we've got, whereas um, you know, a few years back we uh, had employees that weren't particularly loyal to their organisation, they'd pick and choose and they'd take uh, their skills to where they thought that they would be best used. The economic situation that we've got at the moment, I think, um, is making people sort of stay, stay in their organisations. They're, they're less transient. And so uh, it kind of changes and it moves over time, I think. And that's always likely to be the case. Well, the advice I give is not just to understand how the business makes its profit uh, and where it gets its revenue streams from, but also to understand the agenda of each of the stakeholders, and the stakeholders could be the board directors, shareholders, the line managers, the employees themselves, but also external groups as well um, that, that have an interest in um, the local environment that those businesses are working in.